up guys, welcome back to Real Talk. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you my new Honda Civic Type R. Um, now a lot of you are thinking, what the hell, why did you get rid of the M140? In this video, I'm gonna be addressing exactly that, why I decided to get rid of the M140, and why I decided to buy this. And I tell you, I'm absolutely in love right now. I know a lot of people who follow me on Instagram have seen me introduce this, a lot of people are like, what have you gone and done? Give me, give me a video to explain why I've decided to do what I've done. But without further ado, let's jump in. So as mentioned in the intro, I'm going to talk to you why I decided to, to sell the M140 and why I decided to get this as a replacement. Because a lot of people have been giving me stick, a lot of people have been grilling me saying what have you done, you've made the worst decision, VTEC fanboy, all of this stuff I'm getting. So give me a chance just to explain why I've decided to do what I've done. Let's start off with why I decided to get rid of the, the M140. So there, there's, there's a few reasons really. Uh, now, I was never planning to get rid of it until... I'll tell you the story after I say the reasons, but there's a reason why I then start to think uh, to get rid of it. So, in terms of running costs, yeah, it was very, it was good on fuel for what it was, and there's no denying it, but when you'd opened it up, when you do little commutes, you wouldn't get out of the 20 mile per gallon. You, you just wouldn't. It would be low 20s to mid 20s, and a 52 litre tank, you know, 70 quid to fill it up there, thereabouts and you'd get 200 to 250 miles out of it, which is a bit, it's a bit shit, really. Um, so that was one of the reasons. One of the biggest reasons for me is, is there are just so many on the road now. There are so many on the road. Now, I know when I got mine, there was a 0% deal. I know a lot of people took advantage of that 0% deal as well for themselves, but I just think they flooded the market. Now, depreciation, as you know, they've absolutely Oh, they've dropped like you wouldn't believe. So from a retail point of view, they're like 37 grand new. I sold mine 11 months later with 14,000 miles in it for 24 and a half. Fucking hell, that's, you know, that's, that's just thinking about it, it's ridiculous. And the finance that I held on it was obviously more than 24 and a half, so I had to fork out for that as well. It was just, I was just losing money on it. Um, and yeah, I know you got the guaranteed future value, but I had exceeded the mileage slightly, so they were just going to value it at face value, and I would have probably lost a lot more money than what I lost. So that is one of the reasons. There's just so many on the road, and every time I'd go to work and come back, I'd see at least one or two on the way there, and one or two on the way back. I know I had done a few personal things to mine that made it look a bit different. I think it made it look perfect, but there's just so many on the road. Well, there's just so many, and I think really i want a car that's slightly different that stands out from the crowd another reason is manual gearbox i miss a manual gearbox i for those of you who know me you know i love driving and i like really getting that sense of engagement and i just wasn't i wasn't really getting that from the m140 and i think if it had a manual gearbox it would have it would have changed my mind completely really um, but then again, in a manual gearbox, you compromise massively on motorway journeys with the fuel because you've not got that eighth gear. You're not sitting at below 2,000 revs when you're doing 70. The revs are a lot higher and of course you're gonna waste a lot more fuel. Um, but it is the manual, I miss the engagement of it as well. Uh, in terms of running costs, petrol, like I've mentioned, servicing, that it is quite dear. The tires, I was burning through them like you wouldn't believe going sideways out of every junction, which is no one else's fault but my own. A bit rattly on this road, so I apologise. And insurance was just, it, it came back like a thousand odd more than what I was paying the previous year. Managed to get it down to roughly what I paid the previous year, but I thought I've driven an extra year. 
paid a ridiculously high premium. Why am well, I might have to pay the same for, for an extra year's no claim? So it kind of put me off a bit. But I didn't find out about those little things until basically a car came in to where I was working and I thought, right, this is a nice car. What can I have it at? So I was looking at it more of if I can get it a lot cheaper through work, I can soak up a lot of that negative equity I've got. So let's see. So a lot of you probably seen it on Instagram. It's a Golf R, 7.5, so the facelifted one, um, and it was fully specced. So it was black with black Pretoria alloys. It had black Pretoria alloys. Had sunroof, full leather seats, upgraded sound, upgraded nav, uh, heated seats, dynamic chassis. It had everything. It was a fully spec car. So I asked my work, you know, what, what could I have it at? And they came back with a price. I just thought, wow, that's thousands less than what we were going to sell it at. So. Oh, yeah, let's take it for a drive. Took it for a drive, loved it. Had a remap on it, so it was running at like 370 brake horsepower. It was rapid, there's no denying that in a straight line, it was rapid. So I thought, yeah, I'll go ahead of it. Turns out it had a an oil leak around the transmission. I just thought, with a remap, it's not a dealership's not going to touch it. I don't want to then get into a car that's going to cause me more problems than my current car. So I, I scrapped that off, but that initiated me looking at insurance, looking at running costs. Uh, and really start to consider why I wanted a car. But then again, I drove it, and yeah, it's a great car. I fell in love a bit with it, uh, a little bit with it, I'll be honest. But it's it wasn't a manual, and I just felt a bit too safe. It didn't really feel like, as if it was a really engaging drive, I'll be honest. Um, but then that was written off. So then I, in my head, as a guy, you know how it is, or anyone who's into cars, so I don't mean to stereotype there, but you know, once you've got it in your head that you're looking at changing cars, that's it, you're changing car. So I started looking through to see what other Golf R's there were, and I thought, you know what? I've not even looked at a Type R. Uh, now, I used to work at Honda, and I remember the first time I ever went in one of these Type R's, I was like, wow, blown away. Not the quickest in a straight line, but round corners, and the capability of the car was just incredible. And I remember sitting down, going through PCP quotes, and it was like, it was just so expensive. I mean, this was like a year and a bit ago, it was, much was it again so with like seven grand in you're looking at like 450 pound a month it's like wow that's ridiculous um, so I started looking through and I found this and it was quite funny because this one stuck out you know for a little bit more I could I could have a type R and this one st stood out to me because I thought hold on I recognize that car um, turns out looked at the reg and things like that I'd actually sold it uh, to my dad about six months ago uh, so I knew the car quite well. It wasn't brand new when I sold it. It was uh, an ex-demo. But I knew the car quite well. I knew that it had a service plan on it. Um, so in terms of servicing costs, I wouldn't have to pay for a service for like another four years, which is a massive saving for one. We're talking thousands there. So I saw it because my dad sold it recently. So I, I rang this garage up and said, look, I sold the car originally to my dad. I know how much you paid him for it. I know that it doesn't require any prep or anything like that. So what could you let it go for? Um, and he came back with a thousand and a bit off, so almost two thousand off. So I was like, I can't really say no. Yeah, it's a little bit more than the Golf, but in terms of valuation point of view, you look on Auto Trader now, you can't really find one for less than twenty-seven grand unless it's got high mileage and brand new. They're like thirty-two grand, so they hold their value really well. Um, and there's not loads on the road. You never, you, I've not seen one of these since I've had it. I've not seen one. I, you don't see many on the road at all. So I went and looked at it, absolutely fine. Drove it, because I hadn't driven one in a few months. Loved it. Thought, yeah, we'll just go ahead. Insurance was £500 cheaper than the M140. Fuel costs, you know, I'm achieving 35 miles to the gallon, just bottling around. Um, as opposed to the M140, I wouldn't really get that, just driving the way that I'm driving. And I wanted something different. It's a manual gearbox. It is, honestly, it's, it's, a, it's a fantastic manual. engaging and it is you know it is 
I think it's the rawest hot hatch currently on sale today. So if you look at Nurbo ring lap times, I know I refer to it a lot, but I don't think there's another hot hatch which is actually quicker than this around the Nurbo ring. Um, track wise, yeah, we're not on a track a lot of people are going to say, but cornering capabilities, track capabilities, driving both the cars, the M140 and this, I honestly feel this would piss all over one. I really do. Handling wise, it's just phenomenal. It is like a go kart, especially now you've got comfort setting, which is it's dead smooth. It's it's not loud at all. You notice I drive now, put it into sport, it sharpens up a bit, and then you can put it into race mode as well. Um, but comfort, it's if not smoother than the M140. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with Hondas and Honda specs. This particular one's a GT, so it comes with everything as standard. So cruise control, adaptive cruise control, front and rear sensors, reversing park camera, sat nav, wireless charging, lane keep assist, blind spot monitoring, everything. Everything is a standard car that you'd really want. So I'm happy with it in regards to that. The M140, yeah, it was a great car. I absolutely love it. And anyone who's considering getting one, I would get one and get one in an automatic because the automatic box is fabulous it really is um, but as I've always said and everybody else has said who's, who's got one like Joe Achilles and Nor everyone they say it needs an LSD it's ridiculous that kind of car leaving the factory without an LSD because it's just it's just too powerful now the 14,000 miles I spent in the M140 I think they were spent quite well I pushed the car quite a bit I uh, took it to the Nürburgring I think I pushed it almost to its, its you know full potential um, and yeah it was a great car but I would expect it slightly differently if I were to get one again uh, like the adaptive suspension I've heard it works wonders um, I would have liked to have actually got a Motec edition but as soon as I bought mine the Motec edition once came out which was just a bit frustrating really but no it, it was a great car but this I just think it's more me so I know a lot of people are going to hate but I think the reasons that I've given are fair enough but I really actually love this car. It's so fun to drive, it really is. It's so engaging. As a standard car, yeah, it comes with a lot. It's not as nice interior-wise as the M140, but it's that, oh, I just love it. I just love it. So I hope this clears up a lot of questions. There are gonna be more videos to follow the car, of course, uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. So guys, that concludes today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. There's gonna be plenty more content coming out on the Type R. The things I love, the things I hate, how to rev match, how to heal and tow. There's gonna to be so much content coming out, but hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Take care.